Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a reskinned port of your first video game crush, and today it's time for the final island of Mist, the final of uh, the four zones that we'll be visiting in this Let's Play as we progress through the <laughs> the base game, which is what I keep saying even though it's literally not. I really like the design of this area, but it's much more noticeably CGE than any of the other areas in the game. The physical shapes, the polygons of these areas, are rendered with much clearer pixelation. Which is not to say that lots of areas of the game aren't very pixely, but if you look at the texturing of this as compared to the texturing of this, the islands themselves are far more rectilinear, far more noticeably patterned than um, any of the objects here or any of the spaces in the other parts of the game world. So this looks like it's another audio puzzle. Except with a much wider diversity of sounds in this one. Uh, apologies, by the way, for the audio in this one. I Obviously I'm recording right now, so I can't tell, but I'm sure it's going to come out nasty. So, well, that led up. I'm sure that did something. I'm going to assume that... Actually, is that...? Okay, so that's obviously a radio a radio recorder, a um, microphone, and a, a radio transmitter dish. So, I'm going to assume that um, Atrus, Atrus's noted fetish for weird noises you know, that nasty, nasty boy, this is where he's been coming to get his fix, with all of his weird apparatus. So if I turn all of these on, I assume that that's going to help in some way. And indeed turn him on too, probably. Now this, this is some peak early CG art looks. I mentioned last episode that there's a nostalgia for like 2001 era CG, but there is a uniqueness, there is a sort of a a feel unto itself that CG art has that I think that other forms of art don't necessarily share. They do look certain kinds of ways. <laughs> Even this early example of, um, you know, commercialized audio art still has this other... Is that the light spot? <laughs> That's delightful. Uh, still has these examples of this particular feel, this particular weird squiggliness that you get on a lot of surfaces. Well, did that help? It sounds like it did. Oh, this seems like it's going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, so... It looks like I can set this to point in different directions. So if I point it directly at... Whatever that is, if I can get it to actually look at the damn thing instead of scrolling incredibly fast after about a second of holding down the button. Oh, maybe Atrus was into BDSM. Maybe he just like torturing people. Why? Maybe that's why this is so frustrating. So if I can identify what kind of sound that is. Oh, okay. Hang on. So I have to go. I have to go to a place, identify what the noise is, then select that noise on here, and then point this at it. I think. Don't really see how that's going to help me, but okay. I'm not sure I've even turned them all on yet. This, this is the this is the kind of puzzle that I do find tedious to solve. Does actually does flipping that switch do anything other than put the lights on? I wonder why it's there. It's it's not weird to have you know arbitrary little interactable elements in in Mist, but it is a bit weird to have one that does have a structurally useful effect in the game world, but also doesn't really... isn't really connected to anything. There's no puzzle to it, it's just... did you light up the area? Yes. So I guess this is the noise that... oh hey, the page. So I guess this is the noise that crystals make. I don't know if you've, um, I don't know if you've ever listened to crystals, but <laughs> apparently that's how they sound. You know, I really should have believed all of those woo-woo practitioners when they told me all about how crystals uh, vibrate in tones. Actually, is that true? Is that based on some kind of real, actual thing? So this one's going tick-tock, tick-tock pretty loudly. That should be relatively easy to find on the thing, right? That's a clock tower. 
But then once I've once I've identified them on that system and applied them to the thing, deep rumble for the it's like a geothermal thing. So this I presumably need to identify the different sounds and then activate it to get in there, but how do I know what order the sounds go in? After I've after I've input them onto the doodad, after I fiddled with the what's it and um, fangled the splingy, uh, these are all I know I know I know aren't we aren't we just relentlessly twee we British people? I'm sure all the Americans out there are being delighted, but those are not those are not noises that people generally make. This one might be a pain in the ass. Oh ah okay okay hang on that's that's clock tower. So if I get clock tower lined up right, do I have to line it up on the dish, probably? Or... Okay, I'm going to assume that I need to identify these correctly on the on the thing to match to match the the angle, I guess. I wish they didn't go so fast. It's really hard. It's really hard to make this thing work. Ah, okay, that's not. That's nothing. That's that's the crystals. I don't need those. Is this all? Are these cameras all from the same location, or do they? Or are they dotted around the island as well? It's all mysterious, and it's all frankly leading me to believe more and more clearly that Atrus had some kind of a sick mind. It's no wonder his sons turned out like that. If this is how their dad taught them basic concepts. Or was this perhaps... Aha! So if you match, if you get it matched, I guess it automatically makes the noise. See, this is the water one and it's lined up and it's not matching. So does that mean that I can just spin it until I hear it? Call on me. Call on me. Call on me. And other amazing dance tracks from the mid-2000s. Right, uh, where the hell is the water one? I, actually, I'll find the crystal one next because I know what that looks like. Looks like... well, looks like that, really. That could be anything. If you hold it down, it goes really slowly for a couple seconds, and then it suddenly maximises its velocity as it spins around. Which is what I do when nobody's watching in the kitchen. I must... there must be... there must be a trick to this that I'm not picking up on. Well, this is going to take a while, so we're going to cut here and I'll come back in a moment. Okay, well, I've identified all four of these ones. And I have discovered a couple of other things, which is that um, as you get close, the, the interference you can hear fades away and you start to only hear the sound. And these arrows flash to show how close you are. And then when you've got it dead on, they stop flashing. But I can't for the life of me find the water button, which is irritating to say the least. So I'm going to go and have another look around the island and see if we can pick that shit up. This is air. That's... That's where we were, that's the radio tower, so... Is there a button there that I missed, maybe? Because that, that seems the, like the most watery part of this island. Although, all else aside... Yeah, that's that's crystals, baby. Um, all else aside, I do think the vibes of this island are really interesting. It's, it's interesting to see somewhere that's so much more kind of... Aha! This looks like it. Oh, and this must be the miraculously unscathed hill mentioned in the journal. Yes, okay, I just missed it. That's That's all there was to it. This is actually a really nice animation and very advanced for the time. It's especially as convincing that you can only really see the edge of the animation just here. It's one of the most convincing animations in this entire game. Which is, um, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good for 1993, am I right? So, now that I've done that, I can run back over here and input the final part of this puzzle. And then, finally, finally, Atrus will- uh, mm, that's that's a little bit too much of a uh, hmm, maybe I'll cut that <laughs> so I've now successfully identified all four five or five locations and um, yeah I gotta say this puzzle is bullshit each of these has a marker in it it has one of these urns or the ability to see the landmark itself so that you can pick out where it is water doesn't have that you have to 
inch by inch, progress this a few clicks at a time all the way around, all 360 degrees until you find the damn thing. Okay, I'm gonna have to write this down. So in order that's crystal, water, air, earth, and clock, which I guess is time maybe as the fifth element. Speaking of clocks, I think there's someone whose clock I'd like to clean, which is old timey terminology for punching someone in the fucking mouth. And it's either Atrus or the designer of this game, depending on whether we're taking a Watsonian or Doyleist view, or as I prefer to refer to it, uh, a diegetic or exegetic view of the events of this. Should I be angry at the designer or should I be angry at the character of Atrus? The audience may decide. So I think I've lined these up right, let's give it a try. that do it? There we go. All right. <laughs> Actually, I find myself wondering what's up with the apparatus. Because, well, this is clearly a submarine, let's be honest. When, uh, when we first read the book that led to this age, in fact, no, when we read one of the other books, there was mention of his explorations of one of the ages requiring some kind of submarine apparatus, some kind of ability to go underwater. I assumed that that was the rocket ship that got us to this age, but clearly it's this. This is the submarine he built, so why the hell did he need a rocket ship to get us in here? It doesn't make any sense. However, if I was ever building a submarine, I would make sure to give it a nice checkered wood grain floor. Look at that, that's delightful. So, um, what we have here is the single most tedious puzzle in the entire game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the solution in advance, tell you what the puzzle is, and then just solve it. Because frankly, I think it's a huge pain in the ass to actually try and do. So what we're about to do is traverse a pitch black, impossible to see maze, which has 14 correct inputs that we have to do in order. And if we must make any mistakes, we have to backtrack and start over from the beginning. Now, how do we navigate through this, uh, this pitch black location? Well, we have to identify specific sounds and move ourselves in relation to the sound that we hear. It's a long way down. I suppose th this isn't even the submarine. This is this is a deep earth exploration ap apparatus, I guess. I mean. These graphics are very advanced for the time, and it's a really cool design for a space, but it's also uh, pretty frustrating. So we need to go north. West. Honestly, I've been on some commutes like this in real life, and you know what? They sucked there as well. It really just goes to show that, um, you know, artists create what they know, and that is true of uh, game designers as much as anyone else. You can definitely tell that whoever, whoever designed this particular puzzle, presumably the guy who designed all of the rest of the puzzles in the game, Definitely, definitely had to travel a long way on public transport in order to get into the office in the morning and decided that the most ethical thing to do would be to share that extremely frustrating responsibility with the entire rest of the world. Next we go east and at this point I think I'm just going to, to cut the rest of this and join you in a minute after I have lost my goddamn mind. It's just occurred to me. The guidance noises that you hear here are the same guidance noises that you hear all the way back in the machine age. On the one hand, that's really cool. It's a nice idea to bring back that element from previously in the game. But you know, <laughs> if you weren't taking paper notes, there's no way to go back. 
You would have to boot up a whole new instance of the game, solve the puzzle to go into the machine age, go into the machine age, go find the simulator that teaches you how to use the machine age puzzle, write down the directions that correspond to the four noises, then load this game back up and appear here and then solve this puzzle. That, my friends, is bad design. It's nice that the tracks vary from, from time to time. I'm going to assume that that means I'm on the right path. I just had to backtrack a whole bunch and redo a bunch of sections. I've been at this for about eight minutes now and I'm ready to kill a man. Specifically, I'm ready to kill the man who coded this. Actually, no, that's unfair. Only the puzzle designer needs to die. And if they're the same man, I'm gonna kill him twice. right yeah they start combining sounds as well i swear to god i thought the game was about to crash and i nearly blew up my entire house in rip trip i swear to god the game froze for a second i thought it was about to crash and i was ready to murder everyone in this house and then myself please please i am dying it has been six days that i have been trapped in this capsule i thought i would die of thirst so i turned to drinking my own urine and the occasional drippings from the ceiling fan I thought I would die of hunger. I have consumed my boots, my shirt, and my own left leg. There is nothing left. Please, please, we have to escape now. Have we arrived? Are we at last at the station? Am I finally free? I dare not even push the button. So, yeah, one of the worst fucking puzzles in games, frankly. One I find incredibly tedious and frustrating, and one I'm so glad is fucking over, and that I'm not looking forward to having to repeat to go get the other goddamn page. Someone designed this puzzle, and that person needs to pay. Ideally with their life, but I will take monetary recompense. So I guess I'll go ser give Cirrus his fucking page, and then that's going to be it for today. Because, ooh, ooh, I don't even know if this, my, I usually keep track with a timer, whether I'm running up against my, my personally imposed time limit of 20 minutes per episode, but you know what? <laughs> I had to stop and start it so often I've lost track completely. So even if this episode does run short, I'm ending it after this, because, ooh, I'll lose my goddamn mind. Shut up, you smug I owe bastard. I you a debt of gratitude, for you have nearly released me. My name is Sirius. I trust that from your explorations you've become convinced that my wicked brother, Akinov, is guilty, and I am innocent. It is I who am wrongly imprisoned here, imprisoned by my father. I don't know who you are, or how you came to this kind. But I assume you must at least know something of the books. It was father who was a master of the books. He wrote hundreds of them, all describing and linking to the fantastic places and ages which he had discovered. The room in which you now stand was our father's library. It was here in this room on this island named Mist that he housed most of these books. But such a way. By now, you have surely discovered that Akinar has burnt you to the most of these books. Why? Our father was always watchful of our exploration. We grew up under his strict supervision. But when we came of age, he gave us unbridled access to the mist of books. He began to leave our adventures more and more unchecked. Unsupervised as we were, my brother began to become disturbed. He began to take more from the missed ages than he had given. Soon he gained a twisted pleasure from the conquest and destruction of the other ages. It was horrific. His thirst for destruction 
But alas, even I discovered his insanity too late. He had completely destroyed all of the missed ages but four. I wasted no time. In warning my father, I thought he would recognize Akhenar's guilt. But in a fit of rage, he imprisoned both of them. My brother and myself within the pages of these books, designed to hold us until he could judge which of us was guilty. To discover the truth, our father embarked on one final chapter. However, he has never returned. I can only assume that he perished along the way, leaving me an innocent victim. You are here to release me. Listen carefully. You must find one more page and I will be forever free. There is a book on the shelves. This library, which is mostly burned, but has a few pages still intact. It is the last book on the middle shelf. Find it. This book is filled with a variety of patterns. Find pattern 158 and recreate it on the door of the fireplace. This will bring you to the last red page. Bring that page to me, and I will finally be released and able to reward you, of course. Ignore the blue page. That page finishes my brother's book. It chills me to even think what would happen if you were to release him. Yeah, you know what? I'm done with you, buddy. After the hell you just put me through? Frankly, you and your brother can stay in those fucking books forever. I don't care. In fact, the only reason I'm going to go through with this thing is the hope that I can possibly find your missing father and murder him for building this fucking thing in the first place. Then you'll see. Then you'll see how it is, won't you, you stupid bastard? Anyway, so what he told us is that, uh, yeah, so their dad taught them to do magic shit. Their dad made a whole library full of magic books that take you to places. Once they grew up, they started to get sus suspicious and unpleasant. Cirrus here says that Akinar decided to get a bunch of the inhabitants of worlds to conquer other worlds, and Cirrus tragically had to look on with no possible way to intervene. Oh dear. And uh, the culmination of these terrible acts was the burning of the library and the destruction of all of those worlds. Or possibly just the access to those worlds, it's still kind of unclear. I'm sure that when I get the next page for Akinar, he'll say basically the same thing about the other brother. Cirrus also mentioned that um, their father trapped them both in these books while he tried to figure out which of them was guilty for what was going on. My conclusion is that they're both fucking guilty, and that's probably got something to do with why their dad hasn't come back. Probably also got something to do with that video message we found previously, which mentioned them laying some kind of a trap for him by stealing pages out of a different book. So, as far as I can tell, it's people trapping people in books all the fucking way down, and they all deserve to be there. That is going to be all from me for today. Come back next time and we'll hear what uh, Akinar has to say for himself and then, then we're going to go in the fireplace. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I didn't enjoy recording this one at all. Please make sure to like, subscribe and especially share and check out my Twitch channel for regular streams. On Twitter you can find announcements and one tweet micro reviews and if you like what I do and want to support me you can donate on Patreon or Ko-fi. The links are all in the description and thank you so much for watching.